Hey, Cobras, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you guys here and hope you guys are doing well. We're going to be doing a tier list over the enlisted squads here today. I want to quickly say a couple things about tier lists. A lot of people ask me to do these, and uh, I don't mind doing them. I think they are kind of fun to do, but I do want to just preface this by saying my word is not law. Just because I think something is bad or I think something is good does not mean that it is necessarily true for everyone out there. Um, I'm going to be basing these off just kind of the general consensus that I have seen and my personal thoughts on these squads and um, their general effectiveness. But if I say snipers are D tier and you think they're S tier and you have fun using snipers, then by all means, keep using the snipers as long as the, you are being effective and, and really helping your team out, right? Um, then who cares what I say when it comes to stuff like that? But I will again say just again the, the general consensus that I have come to and I have seen people come to about these squads and how effective or ineffective they are generally speaking uh, towards winning a game and enlisted. So starting off here with bombers, um, I'm going to put them in C tier. The big thing with bombers and the reason why they're not in D tier is that bomber soldiers have very, very good perk points. They have very good stats. Okay, they get bonus vitality and getting bonus vitality is the most important stat in enlisted because it guarantees getting the plus 35% vitality perk. And that is the best perk in the game right now. So um bombers are very good the soldiers themselves are good and so you do need to level up that squad and then on top of that it's always good to include a bomber in every single squad because they do help taking out tanks right but the thing about that is that if you're including a bomber in all of your squads then why do you need to have a bomber squad itself and that's why i'm putting this all the way down in c tier because you don't you don't need to bring this squad Right, there's no reason to really bring a bomber squad unless you're just specifically leveling it up to get the bombers the capability to be leveled up, right? Because you need to finish out that red tree or the yellow tree if you want to level up PTRSs or something like that. So generally speaking, bombers don't have too much of a use, the squad itself, um, but the bomber soldiers, the individual soldiers that you can slot into different squads are very useful. And that's why we got them in C tier. Gunners, we're gonna bump up to S tier. Um, very very good squad especially if you were the axis but even the allies have quite a few good gunner squads and gunner weapons um the normandy allies honestly one of their best squads is probably the gunner squad with the bar a2 because they really struggle um with their you know late game select fire rifles so the bar kind of fills that role so i really like the bar and and the gunner squads um, otherwise, of course, the MG34, the MG42, the MG34 with the 75 round mag, uh, the MG13 is also a really underrated gun. And then the DP27s, again, all the MGs in this game do what guns need to do and enlisted, and that is have high mag capacity, kill a lot of enemies, and do it quickly, right? The downside to them is that oftentimes you do need to be braced or at least prone when firing these things. It's hard to use them um, on the move. They were They were nerfed forever ago right on their dispersion while moving so you can't really run into a room and just spray down a bunch of guys the, the bolt dispersion is really bad um you, you can still kind of do that but not as effectively as as you used to be able to so overall these guys are very powerful and they do the things that you want guns to do in enlisted and they do them quite well um maybe not as well as like an assault squad or something like that but still very good the biggest downside with gunners is that their perk distribution is not amazing it's not bad by any stretch they don't have any negatives they just get bonuses to weapon handling um the thing about that that's not really useful is it doesn't do a whole lot in regards to anything other than getting uh gunner threes or no gunner two specifically can get uh, reload speed and vertical recoil reduction if they perfectly roll their soldier which is very nice right you can get vitality sprint speed and vertical recoil reduction along with rep, uh, reload speed which absurdly powerful but very expensive so most of the time i just use gunner ones and i skip out on anything else mortar squads yeah these things are not very good definitely not um really just not a squad that has ever been that good both for just the fact that it's a particularly ineffective tool unless you're squatted up with people and even then it's not really that useful you can just do a lot more damage by sitting in the objective with the machine gun right or using a rifle or something like that um these things can be really effective on on matches or on maps like um Koenigsplatz or Kroll Opera House or um Algebar Farm on the first objectives where it's a very contained open objective. Yes, you can do some damage with them on those points, but 
most of the time i'm going to pass on the mortars they also don't have very good perk points or maybe maybe they do i i honestly don't even know the perk distribution on these guys because i just don't use them ever it, actually the, the more i think about it, i think they do have good perks i think they do get bonus vitality but regardless you just really don't want to use these guys because you're you're losing a lot by not bringing an assault squad or an engineer squad or something like that so that's not even to mention the design side of them where they're just a frustrating thing to go up against and they really just aren't that fun to use right you just sit in the back left clicking and that's just not really an interesting interesting gameplay loop right snipers we're gonna put them in i think we're gonna put them b tier i think generally speaking snipers are b tier i'd rather have a bomber squad but i would definitely not take snipers over a lot of other squads in the game um axis tunisia and allied tunisia with the lee and field number four are an exception to this so those squads are probably all the way up in a or even s tier um, but generally speaking i think the sniper squads are just in b tier um, they can be very effective and you can use them to great um effect i suppose um by picking off a lot of enemies as they rush into the objective or picking off enemies on the objective or taking them out as they rush to defend or something like that. Because if an enemy has a six man squad and you take out half of them, right, as they move into the objective, because the AI are very easy to kill with snipers, then you've brought that enemy squad down to 50% effectiveness. And those guys, the rest of them are probably gonna just get cleaned up by your team, which is very useful. And you can get some mega kill streaks, but if you're not getting like 20 kills, a life with these snipers and in a you know reasonable amount of time right not across not across the whole match but in like you know five minutes or so then you're probably not being that effective with the snipers and you're probably sitting too far back you want to be at more mid-range with snipers rather than like super long range because it'll just make it easier to land your shots and be a lot more effective uh the, the semi-auto snipers excel at this because you can't use them at long range because they won't actually kill enemies because their damage is a little bit lower so overall i think these things are really effective if we're talking about tunisia i think these get bumped up to maybe an a or s tier but overall gonna drop them in b tier rifleman squad are the epitome of b tier i can't there we go uh, they are exceedingly average i mean there's nothing bad about the rifleman squad there's nothing great about them they are exceedingly average they've got a lot of you know good stats around them also Sorry, just to go back for snipers really quick, I forgot to mention the snipers also have minus vitality, so they can never get plus 35% vitality, which makes them very bad. Also, the Moscow Axis sniper squad is quite good, but even that, I don't even really like that gun. I think the gun would be better without the scope. Sorry, back to riflemen. Good perk distribution, they get plus one across the board, which makes them quite good at rolling for bonus vitality most of the time, as long as it's not a detrimental, really bad roll. You're probably going to be able to get all of the perks that you really want and need on your soldiers. So rifleman squads, they do well, right? If you can get an AVT squad in Berlin or an FG42-2 squad in Berlin of nine mans, these things go up to A or S tier. But just generally speaking, nine M1 Garands, that's a lot of firepower it's a it's a good squad they do well and they will perform very well throughout a campaign um you don't get to bring a lot of better weapons maybe like a you know you don't have the firepower that an assault squad might have you don't have the um, versatility that an engineer squ squad might have or the area denial that a flame trooper squad or you know a gunner squad might have but you can just kind of do anything right you, you can just kind of do anything fight anyone and be pretty effective while doing it with the rifleman squad and you're also able to get the perks that you want so overall it's a solid squad no downside to bringing it but not really a whole lot of upside either attack planes um probably a tier um they're better than fighters obviously they can actually do a lot for an objective with the exception of the p47 and maybe the il2m these things are very powerful sorry these things are probably a tier i think the p47 the ju188 and the il2m maybe are um, s tier but generally speaking you're gonna do okay with a with a bomber right since the nerfs you need rockets to really be able to take out swaths of infantry and if it's not a p47d even rockets aren't going to do that much so they're good most people just use them to suicide bomb which there you go 
Um, perks don't matter a whole lot on them because there's just one soldier and you're only using one of them, so it's not a huge deal. I don't even think they can get vitality. I'm, I don't really remember, but you know, it's okay. I think bringing an attack squad, if you were a free to play player, a, a, a bomber squad like this is fine. I don't think there's any downside to it. It's fine. Not a big deal. Not a bad thing. Whatever. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say on these things. It's a plane that blows people up, so it's decent. You know, if you get shot down, whatever, you just go back to the ground. So they can take on enemy planes for the most part. They've got good firepower. They can take out enemy tanks. They can take out hard objectives. They're good to bring. They're not amazing. Tankers, we're going to put up here in A tier as well. Tankers are good. Bringing a tank is solid. Vehicles are solid. Um, tanks can be, tanks range from you know, exceedingly average or worthless um, to exceedingly overpowered, right? Jumbos, Panthers can be so ridiculous to, to fight and to take on. Um, a good tanker can cause absolute, just so much headache for an enemy team, and they can be an absolute nightmare to deal with, especially if they get in a good position overwatching somewhere. It, it can do a lot of damage. You can do a lot um, in a tank if you're a good tank player and you get yourself in a good position but I think a lot of maps don't cater very well to tanks and tanks are very vulnerable to just some guy running up to blowing, running up with an explosive pack and blowing you up. So overall, you kind of lose out on that. Assault squads, definitely top of the top here. I mean, what do you want from me here, guys? They're an assault squad. They're one of the best, if not the best squad in enlisted. They can just take out whole swaths of, of, of enemies on an objective. They're close quarters fighting machines and they've got good perk distribution for the most part right i mean whether it's an mp43 or a grease gun you're going to be very effective using these squads there's a reason why people talk about these squads all the time like the ppsh the um the thompson the mp43 all of those weapons just unbelievably powerful squad overall and again, great perk distributions to boot. You can get plus 35% vitality. You can close in the objectives. You can be hard to take out once you get onto that objective. They're your bread and butter. In almost every campaign, you should be bringing at least one assault squad. There's not really any reason to not. And in some campaigns, you should be bringing multiple assault squads. And then we've got the engineer squad. Um, I am going to put this at the tippy top because I think that engineers for the majority of players are going to be your bread and, well, I just said the assaulters are bread and butter, but just like the assaulters, these are also your bread and butter. I think that if you are a free to play player, you should be running an assault squad and an engineer squad, and then whatever other squad that you wanna be running your personal preference, because the engineers, just like assaulters, are going to be your tip of the spear, okay? Um, they are going to, they're, they're gonna be the ones right behind your assaulters, right? They're gonna be your backup, maybe not necessarily for an assaulting an objective, although they can, right? They can be very effective at, at, at assaulting an objective. But let me tell you guys why this is so powerful and why so many people kind of, I think, don't realize this about the engineer squad. And it has to do, again, with perks. Engineers get plus two vitality, okay? All of them, engineer ones, they get plus two vitality. And that is so important because it means that you can always, always, always roll for that extra vitality on a soldier, that plus 35% perk. And that is exceedingly powerful because you can have a six man squad of engineers all with vitality, recoil reduction and sprint speed. And they become a kind of pseudo assault squad with semi-auto rifles. And you can do so much damage with these guys. In my free to play campaign, I use these guys more effectively than I use my assault squad most of the time because that vitality is so powerful you don't have to you don't have to re-roll them you don't have to worry about getting more engineers to fill in for the ones that didn't get the max roll the way you do sometimes with assaulters you just get to bring engineers and you don't have to worry about ammo ammo doesn't matter you can just just build an ammo dump you can just build an ammo box for yourself you can build a rally point if you find yourself in a nice flanked position build a rally point for your team you want to build an AT gun to take out enemy tank, do it, build an AT gun. You wanna put an AA gun in a hallway and mow down a bunch of guys in um, inside the Reichstag, it's not the Reichstag, whatever that, the Reich Chancellery, you can do that, right? There are, these squads are so unbelievably versatile that it makes them exceedingly powerful. They're basically just a better rifleman squad, right? There's no 
reason to bring a rifleman squad when you can just bring a six-man engineer squad all with decked out vitality and recoil reduction and sprint speed and weapon aim speed or construction speed or whatever you want to give them for their speed perk and they become unbelievable they are so powerful in that context and so I, I i have to put these in the top of s tier i think a lot of people are really going to be you know excited to see that um but i'm not sure it's for the right reasons the wrong way to play engineers is building a ton of barbed wire and objectives um use these guys as an assault squad with that vitality with that vertical recoil reduction you guys will see a massive increase to your gameplay i promise you it is so so good to do that fighters uh we're gonna put these down in c tier they're definitely the worst of the vehicle squads they're not worthless um i'm not gonna put them in d tier but they really i don't think most players should be bringing this if you're a premium player you can bring these along with a tank if you don't like flying and you just want to deal with enemy planes that's kind of what i do a lot of the time um but most of the time fighters are just kind of not going to do anywhere near the damage that a attack plane can do and so i don't think it's worth bringing um if you if you specifically want to shoot down an enemy plane fighters are the way to go but if you're trying to do anything else you really shouldn't be bringing a fighter because that's the only thing that fighters are good at with the exception of the p38 which is a weird plane it's basically an attack plane so there you go flamethrower squads are going to put it all the way up here at the top of a tier i think flamethrower squads are actually very good um, especially flame trooper twos who get bonus vitality as their base perk and then can very easily get plus 35 percent vitality perk giving them a whopping like 40 eight percent vitality bonus or something like that which is just like hilarious right you can survive a point blank car 98 shot at that point which is just insane right so flamethrowers can do tons of damage they cause mass confusion they panic enemies um they can kill enemies so easily and they can distract a lot of enemies not to mention the area denial of getting on an objective and just burning the entrance to hold off enemy any enemies make them inaccurate if they do try to rush in because they are on fire make them bleed out or burn out i guess because they're on fire so flame troopers not quite s tier um, not quite as effective as the other things but man are they effective very very powerful and last but not least our radio operator squad i'm gonna put these guys in b tier um towards the top of b tier if it'll let me can I move you down? All right, there we go. Um, we're going to put them at the top of B tier. I think that these could definitely go up to A tier depending on the future of Enlisted and what we get. We are getting a bombing run, and, and depending on how that shakes out, uh, radio operators could be a lot more powerful. We could get tons of stuff for radio operators, whether, you know, a Katusha barrage or, uh, you know, rocket artillery barrages from a Calliope or a Nurblewerfer, Nebelwerfer, whatever it is. Um, you know something like that and then you know small mortar barrages or you know smoke more smoke rounds creeping barrages all these things that radio operators could potentially have in the future um, could definitely bump them up to be a more powerful class right now i think that being able to call in smoke artillery and being able to call in that artillery strike is useful but if you're not a premium player i think you're better off bringing one of the squads from a or s tier rather than bringing a radio operator squad but again it can be useful and you can drop a nice you know smoke artillery for your team and that can do a lot of um can be very good support or just cutting off enemy reinforcements with artillery and things like that so overall it's a good squad i'd bring it over these other two squads in, in b tier but it's not something that i would take over you know a flame trooper squad or um you know a salter squad or something like that so there you go guys this kind of went on for a little bit longer than uh, i meant it to be but let me know your guys' thoughts on these squads um i'd love to hear it in the comments down below remember you can always come chat with me twitch.tv slash hey quadro and i'd love to hear your guys' thoughts over there and also in our community discord the link for all of that is down in the description below without anything else thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time take it easy